Hi, and welcome back to the Weekly Why after a two-week hiatus for Pesach. I hope everyone had a, uh, a wonderful uh, Passover holiday. Uh, this week we're returning with the uh, Parsha Shemini, which is in the book of Vayikra, or Leviticus. Uh, this week we have, again, the book of Leviticus, as we discussed previously. Uh, the English word, again, for Leviticus comes from Levite. So uh, this, this chapter, or this book of the, uh, of the uh, Chumash, really includes a lot of uh, temple sacrifices. So for a lot of people, it can be pretty dry, and certainly reading it, it does seem to be uh, very specific, very detailed, and sometimes a little difficult to get any kind of meaning out of it. But uh, certainly uh, here, uh, no less than anywhere else, there's just as in-depth uh, lessons we can take. I want to address one idea. Uh, this, seems, there's a lot of, this chapter in particular, or this uh, Parsha, discusses some of the laws of, uh, laws of Kashrut, some of the kosher laws. It describes some of the, uh, the details, some of the factors which we are to identify kosher versus non-kosher animals. And uh, one of them is that uh, for a land animal must be have split hoofs and chew its cud. There's some debate as to whether chew its cud means exactly that, or there's some minor variation of that, but primarily that's really the issue, chewing its cud and having a split hoof. Now it's interesting that there's really uh, very few references to uh, not being able to eat. When we think of, for example, the most unkosher animal in the world, we think of a pig. The pig is the most unkosher animal in the world, right? And yet insects, there are far more references to the um, to insects being unkosher in Torah than there are to a pig. There's really only a couple references to the, these kind of land animals and yet insects all the time. It's much more of a detail. So the question is very interesting. Why is it and how is it that the pig became this symbol of, of treif, the symbol of unkosher food? And some of the commentators have suggested there's really a couple ideas from this and that this is certainly a lesson in how we are to lead our lives. Um, that the pig, for example, it, uh, it does not chew its cud, but it does in fact have split hoofs. So when pigs roll around in the mud, again, some of the, uh, kind of the, the playful interpretations of it, the way it, it uh, rolls around in the mud, it has its hoofs in the air. And you may have heard this before, but the way it has its hoofs in the air, it's almost as if to goad us or to, to show us that, look, I'm a kosher animal, right? Look, my hooves, are, my hooves are split, I'm a kosher animal, but it doesn't chew its cud, of course, right? So the whole idea is that the lesson we take from this is that the, the pig is considered to be not just a, an unkosher animal as, it, as any unkosher animal is, but it's considered to be particularly contempt, contemptible. Why? Because it's really living something that it's not. It's not simply that it's kosher or it's not kosher, has both kosher symbols or neither kosher symbol, but in fact that it's almost trying to convince you that it is kosher when it's not. It's trying to lead that double life. It's leading a lie. And so this is obviously something that uh, certainly Judaism and the Jewish thinkers have looked uh, very negatively upon. And this person who on the outside can come off as very pious and, and loving and giving and selfless and inside really is not that at all. Or on the outside treating with others, you know, very respectful and then goes home and they're a real tyrant to their family or friends. And so this is definitely something which is very, very terrible in, in, uh, in Jewish, uh, according to Judaism in Jewish eyes, is that you may have heard of that in Judaism it's not just about the, um, the letter of the law, in other words, following the law, following the Torah, but it's about the spirit of law. You can follow it, but if you don't really have the, uh, the, uh, the right intentions, then really it's not, it's really not, um, it's not what you're supposed to be doing, right? The whole idea here is that people can theoretically be doing the right thing outside, but on the inside, right, if it's not there, if the spirit of the Lord isn't there, if you're not doing what needs to be done for the right reasons, you could be, in, be doing all the right things, but if it's not for the right reasons, then it's, it's just as wrong. So we have on one hand, we have certainly the laws of kosher in regards to the pig, we have that the letter of the law is important, but the spirit of the law needs to be there as well. So not, it's not just a matter of doing things, but doing them for the right reason, right? But interestingly enough, a direct chapter, that was chapter 11. Only a couple chapters before, and right at the beginning of the Parsha, we have uh, Aaron's sons, Nadav and Avihu. Aaron, of course, the brother of Moses. Nadav and Avihu, the Chumash, or the, the Torah tells us, they brought a strange fire to the tabernacle. And what happened to them, the strange fire, which they were not commanded to do, consumed them, and it killed them. And so here we have a very strange opposite thing. You said, well, hold on a minute. You just told us a second ago that it's not just the letter of the law, but it's the spirit of the law that matters. Nadav and Avihu were kind, giving, you know, people who really want to connect it to God, and they, they brought this, this fire offering completely out of their own volition, trying to become close to God. So how is it justifiable? How is it defensible that this fire could have consumed them? 
And so it's exactly the same issue, just inverse, right? With the other one, we said it's not just the, the letter of the law which is important, but the spirit is also important. And here it's the inverse, but it's the same thing. Here, it's not just the spirit of the law which is important. So Nadav and Avihu, Aaron's sons, had the spirit of the law. They were doing it for all the right reasons, but the letter of the law was off, right? They just weren't doing what was asked, and they were going against what, what God had taught. So again, the lesson for that's right, juxtaposed, one right after another, right? We have Aaron's sons, and right after that, the laws of the kosher animals. It's not a coincidence, it's not, yeah, it's not a coincidence that these are right beside each other is that on one hand, we have to have the letter of the law and the spirit of the law together. We have to understand why we're doing things. We have to understand the purpose of it is to refine us, to make, to make us more sensitive, kind, giving people to others. But at the same time, the laws have are an end in themselves for many ways. So we can't just look and say, well, you know, if it's about making me a kind and giving person, I can do that without the Torah. That would obviously be missing the letter of the law. But at the same time, you can't say, or we can't say, I'm going to follow the Torah and, you know, I'm not really going to correct myself, my character traits, because again, that's entirely missing the spirit of law. So again, the lesson from Parsha Shemitah, one of many, many ideas, is that Aaron's sons, Nadav and Avihu, teach us that they had the spirit of the law, they were doing it for the right reasons, but they were doing the wrong thing. And the laws of kosher, especially the pig, teaches us you can be doing the right thing, but doing it for the wrong reasons, and that's just as wrong. So again, for us, my blessing for you and for myself, for everyone, is that we can have the clarity and the determination and the self-discipline to be able to not just do the right thing, but for the right reasons as well. Okay, best wishes, Shabbat Shalom.